Hey there, once again, YouTube. Just a quick update at you. One of my viewers sent me in a video, which I thought was kind of cool, kind of interesting. Uh, it's from Jeff Doc Holiday. He is the radio show host from 95.5 My Country, who I did an interview with not too long ago. The interviewer was very nervous during it. <laughs> um, he said that he had a video of a possible new Steam vent, which I thought was pretty cool. At Yellowstone Super Volcano. And he attached a map with the approximate location. Both steam vents seemed very out of place. Um, you can see it right here is the approximate location of where he was right on shore of Yellowstone Lake. He lives in Casper, Wyoming, or at least that's where he goes to work, and that's in central Wyoming. So it's not too far from Yellowstone, so they do take a trip to Yellowstone every now and then. And he kind of keep, uh, keeps me up to date with new things that he sees, so... I just want to show you the video that he sent me, just because I think it's pretty interesting. I kind of like it. And right here, we see a... Now, notice the grass around here is pretty healthy. So this doesn't really look like an active thermal area. Most active thermal areas kill off a lot of the trees, a lot of the grass. Basically, nothing can grow around an active thermal area that's been active for some time. Especially that new active thermal area that's discovered to the north-northeast of Yellowstone Lake. Uh, which people talked about quite a bit. Right here. Almost looks like it's coming up out of the water. You can see there's Yellowstone Lake right here. Beautiful area. I, I, I hope to visit this place someday. But he said he was here, what, maybe a year ago? or I, I don't know exactly when, but he's been here before, and he doesn't remember this being here. So it's possibly just a new... Th and it's, it looks pretty small. Obviously, it looks pretty small. And the grass surrounding it looks pretty healthy. So it could be just a new steam vent popping up on the edge of Yellowstone Lake. Just thought I'd share this with you guys, just letting you know. I think it's very interesting. Now let's look at where the thermal areas are at Yellowstone, see if there are any near this area. Obviously, again, this is not an active thermal area right here, because the grass seems pretty healthy. It almost looks like it's coming out of the water, almost. Isn't that interesting? Here we are at the National Park Service website talking about hydrothermal activity at Yellowstone Caldera. Every little tiny dot that you see is a thermal area. And let's see, under the park's hydrothermal system is the visible expression of the immense Yellowstone volcano. They would not exist without the underlying partially molten magma body that releases tremendous heat. They also depend on sources of water such as the mountains surrounding the Yellowstone Plateau. There, snow and rain slowly percolate through layers of permeable, permeable excuse me, rock riddled with cracks. Some of this cold water meets hot brine, directly heated by the shallow magma body. The water's temperature rises well above the boiling point, but the water remains in a liquid state due to the great pressure and weight of the overlying water. The result is superheated water with temperatures exceeding 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if you can see it, but remember how he said on the map that he was right in this location right here. Here, let me zoom in a little bit. I really don't know if you can see it, but do you see tiny, tiny right here and where he was basically right on the caldera boundary, the, what would that be, the southeastern caldera boundary along Yellowstone Lake on the eastern shores of Yellowstone Lake right there. You can see tiny red dots right there. So there are some very, very small thermal features near the location where he did see this, but the grass again around it looked pretty healthy, so it could be a new steam vent from Yellowstone Lake. And nothing to worry about, guys. Earthquake activity is pretty low, so it would take a lot more than a tiny steam vent to start something. But I just want to let you guys know. I just want to put that out there because I thought it was very intriguing. Looked like a new one. Also kind of looked like it was coming out of the water, possibly. Very, very intriguing. So just want to let you guys know about that. And there are a few teeny tiny thermal areas around here, but nothing compared to the other thermal areas at the rest of Yellowstone National Park. There are even some thermal areas far far beyond the caldera boundary even all the way up here near mammoth and of course the norse geyser basin and the upper middle and lower geyser basins in this area right here and also far from the caldera boundary down here so there definitely are some thermal areas far from actually on top of the magma body especially that far away i mean that's pretty far away for a thermal area at yellowstone and so let's move on to something else just real quick here we are at pnsn.org now, there's something that I always keep an eye on. I check this about every two to four days. I make sure that I check it just in case. Let's go to custom search. So you can do this along with me. Go to pnsn.org. Go to the earthquakes drop down menu. Click custom search. And I like to keep an eye on this just in case if there's anything new. I click all magnitudes, all dates, uh, all latitudes and longitudes, all depths, but do not click all events. 
Uncheck everything but unknown and low frequency. Whoops, my bad guys, let's redo that. I mean uncheck local events, uncheck unknown and uncheck region. And notice how it says, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it says low freak for low frequency earthquakes. Only have that one checked. And then we would scroll down and click query. Here, let me zoom out just real quick. So all we have it set to is low frequency earthquakes. This will be the PNSN low frequency earthquake catalog. Scroll down, click query. And it'll run, it'll run. All right, so we see Newberry called there, Newberry called there, Newberry called there. You guys already know this. We've been over this a lot, how there have been a few deep long period events at Newberry and many, many low frequency earthquakes in the past few years. But I haven't seen anything added for quite a while, actually, until today. I checked it today, actually. Let's go to View UTC. Notice how there was a 1.2 low frequency earthquake. Let's go over here. At 7.6 kilometers in depth. At July, on July 11, 2019 at 1758 UTC, 26.4 kilometers from Longview, Washington. Usually you would name a volcano right here because most of frequency events are either deep long period events or normal LFLP events at volcanoes. This is pretty far away from the closest volcano, which would be Mount St. Helens. So I thought this was very intriguing. I thought maybe they accidentally labeled it as a low frequency event and it was actually a quarry blast. However, this event has been reviewed by a seismologist and it is on their low frequency catalog. Location quality is good. That's not too bad. The depth uncertainty, I'm pretty sure, is pretty good as well. Let's go to the waveforms. You can see this is a clear low frequency earthquake with some high frequency onsets, but don't let this stop us. I just want to make sure that this low frequency earthquake was not reported by somebody else, by USGS. Even though they are partners, they are, you know, somewhat different sometimes. Uh, but I want to make sure they did not report it as an explosion or a quarry blast, because quarry blasts do occur down here, but never at 7.6 kilometers in depth. We see right here, July 11th, 2019 at 1758 UTC. And let's go back. Let's go to overview. July 11th, 2019 at 1758 UTC near Longview, Washington. Longview is right down there. Notice that this is the event, the 1.2 at 7.6 kilometers in depth. 1.2, 7.6 kilometers in depth. Just want to make sure you guys know that I'm looking at the same exact event. Look at the location of this low frequency earthquake. Mount St. Helens is all the way over here. I'm going to say anywhere from maybe 60 kilometers to the northeast is where Mount St. Helens resides from this low frequency earthquake. Very strange location, very strange depth for anything like this in this area. Let's click the event page. Obviously, nobody felt it. It's pretty hard to feel a low frequency earthquake unless it's probably like magnitude 5, but I don't think low frequency earthquakes can ever get that high. Let's go to origin just real quick. The depth uncertainty plus minus 0.7 kilometers. That means it could be either 0.7 kilometers deeper or 0.7 kilometers shallower. Now that shows that this definitely occurred underground. This was not a quarry or mine blast. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Quarry or mine blast. Sometimes mine blasts can occur underground, maybe a kilometer, maybe two kilometers at max. But the, I believe the deepest hole that any person has ever dug was about 7.5 miles, but that took 24 years of digging and several branches in the hole, the deepest branch of the Cola Super Deep Borehole, stopped in 1944 at 12,262 meters, about 7.5 miles, which would be approximately 12 kilometers. But then again, 7.6 kilometers is still really deep, and we do not have any mines or any quarries or anything like that in Washington State that it comes even close to that depth at all. So I just want to make sure everyone knows that this was not a quarry or mine blast, which can sometimes look like a low-frequency earthquake. We're going to take a look at the data from the closest seismic station being reported, which again would be likely RVW2 in the UW network, short period vertical. Let's take a look at the data from the station in the seismic program swarm and check out this low-frequency earthquake at a strange depth in a strange location. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with data taken from RVW2 in the UW network. Dash dash location code because none is given. Short period vertical. No frequency filter is needed right now. Now notice the waveforms, shall we? Let's take a look at this. Notice the lower frequencies near the half end of this event along the S waves. And uh, look at that. Very spaced out right here. It does almost look like some type of explosion. But they said the depth was pretty much constrained correctly, and it's in a strange location, 7.6 kilometers in depth near Longview, Washington. 
have no idea. And it's a very strange looking earthquake. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a low pass filter. Uh, let's see, what was that background noise occurring at? I just want to see what it's what this is, looks like without the background noise. Notice the high frequency onsets, right? Frequencies were almost going up to 15 hertz right at the beginning and dropped dramatically. And sometimes low frequency events can have low frequency onsets, which means the beginning of an event. The beginning of an event would be the onset of the event, and the end of the event would be the coda, the end tail of an earthquake. So I want to look at everything below this. Let's do, let's see, that's about 6 hertz. Let's do a low pass filter of 6 hertz, which will delete all frequencies above 6 hertz. Notice that? Take a look at the waveforms right here. It does look like a low frequency earthquake, but the frequencies are still a little too high. However, PNSN did put this within their low frequency category or catalog, excuse me. So I guess this is a low frequency earthquake. Again, to me, this looks like an explosion and looks like some type of explosion. But the depth, of course, I, the depth looks like it's correct, guys. I don't know. I'm scratching my head. There, there's really no volcanic areas in this area. The closest one is Mount St. Helens, which is what, 60, 70 kilometers to the northeast. So I have no idea really what caused this event. Again, here are the waveforms. Here's the spectrogram plot. Very interesting, guys. Let's check out the dominant frequencies. Notice we did see a little bit of a spike right before 15 hertz, but the remainder of the frequencies, the strongest frequencies, were between 0.7 hertz and 3.1 hertz. So I don't know, guys. What do you think about it? I think that's very, very strange. Let's just take a real, really quick look at the second closest seismic station, which would be Borehole 203 in the PB network. That's the location code, short period vertical. Now, we see on this station, this definitely looks like a low-frequency earthquake. That is for sure. Notice that. And still a little bit of the high-frequency onset, so that is very strange. But then again, this was labeled as a low-frequency earthquake on the PNSN earthquake catalog. So... I don't know, guys. This is very, very strange. And it's always good to check everything right before you quit doing a video because you never know what will happen. In the world, we do have some small earthquakes going on, but looky, looky here. Let's go to Montana, shall we? Which just saw as of, let's see, 152 UTC, the 14th, which would be, let's see, 5, 6. That'd be 6.52 p.m. Pacific Time, which would be 7.52 p.m. Mountain Time, July 13th, 2019. Remember, UTC is ahead of us on here on the West Coast by about seven hours or so. Uh, 4.0, it's six kilometers in depth in Manhattan, Montana. Just happened about 50 minutes ago, something like that. Already coming in, 402 people reported feeling it. There's the moment tensor right there. A very, very interesting earthquake in Manhattan, Montana, 4.0, six kilometers in depth. Let's go to the interactive map, see where this struck, just real quick. Far to the northwest of Yellowstone National Park, there's Bozeman, Montana. Manhattan pretty much is right here, I believe. Let's see, Three Forks, Belgrade, Bozeman. So people in this area probably just got shaken uh, awake just by a quick 4.0. Let's take a look at it in the closest seismic station possible, shall we? Which would be this station right here, USBOZ BHZ00. Here we are in the seismic program swarm. Let's go forward. You can see the magnitude 4.0 clear as day right here. High range frequencies as we should see. Looking pretty, pretty strong guys. And let's zoom in on the waveforms. Upwards going P wave showing compression on this station. Let's go forward. See poss possibly a little aftershock right there. Yeah, that's most likely an aftershock. See any more aftershocks? Are there any more? Probably little teeny tiny guys here and there. Tiny aftershocks, probably no more than magnitude 1.5 to 2.0. A few uh, tiny aftershocks, very, very tiny. Not seeing much else. It's not seeing much else. And then another aftershock right here, just as of the past five minutes of me recording this. And again, here's the magnitude 4.0 in Montana. That's pretty much it. And let's just real quick go back to the earthquake map. I just want you to see something real quick. Let's go to California. Now, remember how in the past 24 hours, for each 24-hour period, we were seeing almost 2,000, I'm going to say 1,700 to almost 2,000 earthquakes per 24-hour period recorded for the Ridgecrest and Coastal Volcanic Field area, where they had the 6.4 and 7.1 on July 4th and July 5th of this year, just earlier this month. 869, let's zoom all the way to this area. Look at that. 
Only 792, which is the lowest count I have seen since the 4th of July and since all of this started. So it does seem like it is starting to calm down. We still see a gap in seismicity right here. Barely any seismicity occurring where the magma chamber is located itself. Again, no sulfur dioxide if you look on earth.noschool.net. So it seems like things are calming down. Uh, at least it seems that way, but you never know. Since we had an earthquake up here in Washington the other night, woke us awake. I mean, it was pretty cool. The TV was rattling. I kind of liked it. My daughter didn't, but uh, you always be prepared, no matter what. It doesn't matter if you think something's coming or not. You should always have a go bag ready and always, always have a plan. Always. Because those who die are the ones who were not prepared. Just letting you know. I hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and I'll be back on later. See you later.